What happened to my fonts? They're all too big. They're too small. They're too something else. It's all I've been hearing over the web for the last four or five days since the release of Darktable 3. If you're a little confused, don't be. In this video, we're going to look into how you can change the size of the fonts within Darktable and why they changed. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 56 of Understanding Darktable. Like I said, it's all I've been hearing for the last few days on the Darktable user list on Facebook. People going, what happened? The fonts are all crazy big or crazy small or something. So one of the things they changed in Darktable 3 is that the theme is now customizable through a CSS style sheet, which means Anyone can go in and change the size of the fonts. You can even change the name of the font family if you so desire. And this was all done for people who are using high DPI displays, so 4K and above. So, you know, 4K if you're on Windows or Linux, 5K Retina displays and the like if you're on Mac. So, how do we find the CSS style sheet? Well, if you are using a version of Darktable which you have installed from an official repository like Ubuntu or Debian, Fedora, whatever. You will find in your root file system, not the home directory, but the actual root of the Linux file system, a USR, user folder, and inside that a share folder. And if you scroll down to the Ds, you will find a folder called Darktable. And you will notice, on my system, there isn't one. And the reason for that is because I uninstalled my official Linux Mint 2.6 build and compiled my own from source. Now, if you have gone that route, where you have downloaded from GitHub the source files, compiled your own, and installed your own version, you will have had the opportunity, if you chose to take it, to install your version of Darktable to a custom folder. And I did that. On my system, I went File, Opt, Darktable 3. Now, once you find that Darktable folder, you want to come in the shared folder, Darktable, and inside there you will find a folder called Themes. Now, in the Themes folder, are all of the CSS files, the style sheets, which describe the various themes that came with Darktable 3. Now, before you go madly clicking on these to go editing them, just be warned. On my version of Linux, and possibly on your version of Linux, you will need to enter this themes folder as root. You won't be able to just go in and start editing these if you are not logged in as an administrator. So on my system, I right click on the themes folder, go open as root, enter my password, and now I'm in the themes folder with elevated privileges, and now I can simply double click on one of these themes to start editing. Now, from what I have seen from the email list, the darktable.css theme or style sheet kind of acts like a parent to all of the other themes. So you really want to change the darktable.css theme rather than any of the others because the other themes read a lot of information from this parent theme. Now, I know everyone says it, nobody does it, but please just take a backup of this CSS file. It's only a couple of kilobytes. It's not going to kill you. Just put it somewhere safe so that if you mess it all up, you can at least go back to the original version. With that said, and ignored, double click on the CSS theme and it will open in your text editor of choice. Now, if you have a text editor that displays line numbers, the line you're looking for is 160. I don't in this particular text editor, so I'm just going to scroll down until we find font size and I have already changed it. In the original version, it would have looked like 1EM. 
I used to know what EM stands for, but I have forgotten it. You can use EM if you remember or know what it stands for, or you can simply use points. I have changed my version to 8 point, but just for the demonstration, I'm going to change it to 12 point. And the beauty of Linux is that even if I had Darktable open, I could change this CSS file, hit save, and simply refresh the theme within Darktable, and it would be as happy as Larry. If you're on Windows, I haven't tried it, I don't know, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say, there's no way in hell Windows is going to let you do that. Windows is going to make you shut down Darktable, edit the CSS file, and then relaunch it. Now, if I'm wrong, please sing out and let me know, but I would be very surprised if Windows would allow you to do that. I, at the moment, don't actually have Darktable running, but I will demonstrate it in a minute. So I've just saved this with the font size set to 12 point. I will now launch Darktable 3, and there is all of the text with a 12 point font. Okay, let's switch back to the CSS style sheet, and I will change this to, let's go six point. Let's be silly about it, shall we? Come back into Darktable. Now you'll notice it hasn't refreshed yet. Click on the gear icon and simply choose any other theme and straight away it has resized to a six point font. And then for me, I would simply go back to the original Darktable theme because that's the default and I'm quite happy with that. And that is Darktable running with a six point font. Now, to be honest, that's just a little bit too small for my liking. So I'm gonna come back to here. I'm gonna change that to eight point, click on save, go back. Ooh, why did you hide that top bar? Ooh, nasty. Okay, bring that up, change back to my original Darktable theme. And there it is with an eight point font. If you don't remember how to change and hide and show that bar up the front, you, my friend, need to go back and watch it 54 again. Or you could just press Control Shift T. <laughs> okay, just messing with you. All right, so hopefully that has given you an understanding now of how to find those CSS style sheets and how to modify the font size within that style sheet so that you can change the way it displays on your particular installation of Darktable. Now, if you are on Mac or Windows, I am sorry, I have no idea where you will find that themes folder, but hopefully you can follow what I did on my Linux system and you probably know where to find uh, where those folders live on your file system. If you don't, please sing out in the comments down below because I'm sure there are other users who are either on Mac or on Windows who will be able to shed some light on that for you. All right, guys, hopefully now you and your high DPI display are just as happy as Larry is and you've got the fonts looking the way you want them to. If you've still got issues, please sing out and I'll do what I can to help. All right, I think that will do it for this episode and I will catch you in the next one.